Gillis family, the Madison family. <clears throat> Keep them in your prayers and also the lost and least and the left dots. I love y'all. <laughs> talking about this in Sunday school, how uh, Jesus was going into uh, going to the world and he was trying to explain the Bible and uh, people believed in the Bible, but they didn't believe in him. And John 5 and 39 and 40, he told them, he said, search in the scriptures and you see and believe in God, but you don't believe in me. With him, we got eternal life. But the people didn't believe. Why did they believe? And it came to me when I was getting ready to uh, get ready for to set up. Somebody came to me and said, you know why? She said, I'm, I'm going to tell you what I think. I think it's because they didn't think that Jesus came from the rich people, the religious like the religious side of the, the house, as they per se. But he came from somebody, he came from a carpenter. You know, just like y'all. We all came from, we didn't come from riches, did we? People didn't think and don't know what you done been through. And how God has led you to where you are today. But seeing is believing, right? Seeing is believing. You've been through hell. High water. But look what God has brought you through. We're here today because God has brought us through. He let us go through fire. He let, I mean, it's been days that we've all been on our knees, begging, asking why. We've all been there, right? We've all been there to that point and that time that this just feels like it's over for me. This is the end for me. I can't understand why I'm going through all of this hell. But look what he brought you through. Amen. Look what he brought you through. We should all be thanking God right now. We should all be clapping right now. We have been through it. But we're here. Amen. We're here. Amen. All the trials, all the tribulations, all the fights, all the agony, all the pain, all the suffering, you're here. And you think it's the end? He always shows you better. When you think it's the end, he always shows you that you're here for a reason. If that's to lead your family, if that's to lead your, your friends, he allowed you to be here. He woke you up this morning. I am grateful that he woke me up this morning. Amen. Amen. Nicodemus came up to Christ and told him 
How can you be born again? Do you have to go into your mother's womb again and then come back out? And Jesus told him no. <laughs> to be born again, to be born again, is to have your soul restored. Yeah. Your heart cleansed. Yeah. You have to believe and trust in him. Amen. You have to believe and trust in him. And the Lord said, Verily, verily, I say it to thee, except the man be born again in the water, in the water, <laughs> you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. We have to believe and trust in that. It's how Jesus stood up to Nicodemus. We have to stick up to our demons. We have to stick up to Satan. And he's here. He's around. Always. Always. But you have to defeat him spiritually. Yeah. Not with these. Spiritually. Say, I trust you, Lord. I trust you. So my five minutes are up. I know I took nine. <laughs> Take three more. <laughs> Take three more. <laughs> no, I think Brother Say is ready. Brother Say, you ready? We're going to have one little song, one little short song, but then we're going to come up and pray. And then we'll turn it over to you again. And then we'll go from there. And let's start praising. Yeah. 
saying coming home to you, Father God. On the world, Father, and the guilty of him, Father God. This is not the first time, Father God. We all have been touched by this stage, Father God. It's the first time that when you go through it, the holidays, Father God, that you miss him and Father God. But we have a comforter, Father God. And we know that you send him in the time of need. You feel it bad, Father God. Call on your comforter. He comes to you at this time of need, the bereavement. He's there for you, not only for the Gillies and the Wolf family, for all of us. Father God, we done been here and we done sent Satan's gold to you for time again. But Father God, we also seen them come in here with their pain, their anguish, Father God. Don't even want to get up out of bed, Father God. But we see them come in this house, Father God. That's where we get our strength from, Father God. Watching our saints to go before us, struggle with their death. The demons of the hell, Father God. But they keep coming in and they keep coming in, Father. I'm so grateful that I see this, Father. And the families that have these strong, strong saints in their family, Father God, they see it, Father God. They're not the only ones being touched by this, Father God. But we have a confident, Father God, and it's good to know that, Father God. But there's still glory over there, Father God. That's why I go. Jesus says, I have many mansions, many mansions. So I know I have a mention over there, Father God. They went before me, Father God. I heard you went before me, Father God. Jesus said, I'm coming back. So we know there is a promise for you, Father God. And we all going to have to go through this one time or another, Father God. But like I say, Father God, there's always a comfort of Father God. He comes in your memory. But when you close that door and there's nobody around, Father God, we cry out, we cry out, and we cry out, Father God. And we know that you have our hands. We know that you're around us, you're wrapping your arms around us, Father God. And this day, a holiday time, Father God, is so really strong, Father God. More families are falling. This seems like this is just running around the Father God. But then we come back to you, Father God. And you say it's all right. I've seen it before. I am the great creator. There's nothing that I have not seen that will come before me that is not wrong. I know that I love y'all. And y'all know that you know me, Father God. But you will let me. Everybody has a prayer for you, Father. You never feel always watch for the hurt, the heartache, Father God. But you always have somebody other in the world, the angels other in the world. We don't know what you're saying, Father God, but I ain't just before you. I'm uttering our names to for you, Father God. To give me family strength, Father God. Give us strength, Father God. Let us keep walking the path that you are giving us, Father God. Let's not go to the death, Father God. Let's just be born before. As I come to the close, Father God, I'd like to say that I love you. Thank you for the strength that you have given this whole church, Father God, and the families that are represented in this church, Father God. Even though we have saints in glory, Father, they look no over and say, Bless it. And y'all keep going, and y'all. Even though some go, we're going to add more to you. Don't worry, I'm speaking it into the atmosphere, and y'all. We're going to have more saints come forward, and I'm going forward. We're going to keep going. In Jesus' name, we pray.
You can do it by way of downloading the Giftify app, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y dot com. That's right, Giftify dot com, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y dot com. Download that app, it's safe and secure. Many of you are doing that, and we thank God for you. And you get an email receipt, you can actually take that and share it with your accountant. Write it off on your taxes because we are 501c3 non for profit. So I want to encourage you to do it. If you're old school, just want to write a check or money order or just get hard earned cash, you can do that too. We have a lockbox in front of the church. Share that with us. Somebody's thinking, said, man, he's talking about money. You know what? All right, I am. It takes money to do ministry. And also, guys, we spiritualize the church too much. Old preachers say we want to shout on credit, but we want God to cash our checks. Amen. It takes money to do ministry. Amen. And if this ministry is a blessing to you, so we'll see to keep it going. It does not come to me. The church will tell you it goes directly to the bank, to the church's account. And again, you get a confirmation email because we are people of integrity. Amen. So make, good, make sure we do that which is right in the sight of God with God's money. So again, so that seed, giveify.com, and we thank God for your giving. We also want to say to you, my brothers and sisters, happy Thanksgiving weekend to you. We hope and pray that you didn't eat too much turkey and dressing. But just in case you did, it's time to jog around the block. Amen. Walk around the block. You ought to nudge somebody sitting next to you. You ought to talk to somebody that's right here on faith, on, on social media, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or the World Wide Web. Somebody ought to put out a comment. I'm going walking this week. Amen. I'm going to walk off some of this turkey and dressing. Come on, y'all. Don't look at me funny. Some of these love handles, I got to shake some stuff off because you know you ain't half the turkey. Hello, somebody. So we thank God for you. We hope and pray that you've enjoyed yourself during this holiday season. Please, ma'am, please, sir, in all seriousness, be mindful of your diet because our health is the new wealth. Amen? Amen. You don't have to eat the whole chicken. Just eat a little wing now. Eat the rest later. Praise God somebody. Amen. We want to be spiritual, not deal with the reality that we are living on earth. Also, we want to thank God for those of you that have prayed very earnestly for Sister Pam, Alan, who lost her husband, Brother Richard, strong man of God. Amen. Continue to pray for the Allen family, for the Gurdon family at this hour. Also remember our beloved family of Sister Gwen Woolfolk. Gwen Woolfolk transitioned at 1.42 a.m. in the a.m. hours. She took her flight, one of our strongest members. Amen. Amen. She was here. She supported Sunday school. Amen. She supported the pastor. She never gave the church any problems. Oh, my God. We're going to miss this to win. Yeah. Let me try it one more time. We're going to miss this to win. Yeah. Yeah. Pray with her for the family as they go through an hour of bereavement. She was a tiger. She never had anything negative to say. Amen. And how many of y'all know you choose to either be happy or you choose to be miserable? Amen. I choose to be happy. Amen. I choose to be happy. We thank God for her. She fought until she couldn't fight anymore. Amen. So we are praying with and for that family. It is the family of Sister Gwen Gillis Wolfolk, the Gillis family, that we find the seed of Ethel Gillis, Amen. Margaret Lewis Cornish. Amen. Sister Margaret Lewis Cornish. We don't talk about people like that too much was the first candidate for water baptism Amen. in the history of this church. She was the first, Amen. according to the church history. Amen. That is the seed of Sister Gwen, Amen. a brother, Brother Fred is here. Give God praise for Brother Fred. Amen. 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 So we thank God for him and Amen. Children, Octavius, Amen, and Sister Jessica, Amen. and her husband, Michael. Who was with Michael last night, went by the house and sat with him. 
And I told him, I said, you may never get over this, but God will get you through this. Amen to that. How many of y'all know you may never get over it, but you will get through it. Come on, give God thanks for how we get through it. Amen. Amen. Ministerial announcement. I am what you call a people's pastor. I know every member of my church, one by one. And it's right under 500 and some of them all the row. Amen. But I know every one of them. I know their families. I minister to people. Amen. And I believe in pastoring. In many minister to the people. God will take care of you Amen. when you do your best for his people. Amen. 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 To you pastors out there, I want to encourage you. After 38 years of doing this business, there will be some who will appreciate you. Then there will be some who would just develop selective amnesia. Amen. But don't worry about it because God will never forget about you. Amen. And to the churches out there, keep ministering to one another. I want to be in a church where people care. Amen. Amen. Where people love me, right. appreciate me. Amen. And so we give God praise for the Antioch Church family. Amen. 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 Thank you, Antioch. Amen. For allowing pastor 22 years. Minister Antonio Tace is getting ready to be ordained. Amen. Sir. Amen. Amen. At 3 p.m. Eastern Time. We will televise it as well. And I want you to be a part of that uh, as he prepares now to go through the last channel of sessions with me uh, as it relates to ordination. You will be a reverend. You're not a reverend until you are ordained. Amen. 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 And you will be an assistant to the pastor to help me in my quest to pastor this church. And so we thank God for him Amen. and his lovely wife, Alicia. Give God praise to both of them. Amen. She's in the house. Wake your hand and say amen. In the house. Amen. She said, go on, honey. You do that thing. I'm here. Amen. So she's happy for him. It's not like having somebody to celebrate you. Amen. So we thank God for both of them and their family and what they're doing for this church. We love you in the Lord. We want to say that the women are getting ready. Somebody say, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Mother and daughter Sunday school hour. Mother's going to be bringing their daughters in. We want you to bring your daughters and granddaughters and these go to somebody. Amen. Bring them to the women's Sunday school hour. Sister Carolyn, wave your hand. Sister Carolyn, Sister Carolyn Madison. And her two dynamite daughters, Juanita and Tracy Ray, y'all and mother and daughters, y'all. They're going to coordinate the Sunday school hour for mother and daughter. Sister Beverly, wave your hand. Sister Beverly is going to be the teacher. And so for those of you that are viewing online, we want to see you here in the church. Before I go to the text, it's strange, odd, peculiar, and somewhat funny. My sister Fry, we go everywhere else. I watched UK and just beat up on Louisville last night. I just, I, it, was, it was hard. And, uh, that's my hometown, by the way. I felt bad. I was like, Lord, have mercy. I mean, the quarterback just running all over. I mean, it's just crazy. But here's my point we go everywhere else. Barbershop, beauty shop. Backyard barbecue, malls, we hang out, car wash. We go everywhere else. Yeah, sure we do. Red Mile, casinos, everywhere. Somebody say everywhere. Bingo! We go everywhere else. Black Friday sales, everywhere. When it comes to going to church, Sister Myers, people say, oh, I can't go to church because COVID is out there. But you still go. We do what we want to do. Amen. Go where we want to go. We have been open to our online visitors, online viewers ever since the first Sunday in June. Amen. We get the church clean. We have it. Amen. Fall. Amen. We do that for precautionary. But I thank God for those of you who are present today. We thought in our robbery. We are anxiously getting ready, and I'm almost done. For our children's church, the kids have been pulling on my coat. 
saying, we're going to get our children church. We're going to get it. We got to turn to your consent form. Amen. Consent forms, Brother George, in the piano stool. Brother Mobley, look in there and get some consent forms. I think they're there. They may be in the back. And hand them to the ushers. If you want your child to attend, you have to fill out these consent forms to attend. And we will get our children's church going real soon. Amen. Turn with me to Genesis. Brother Shea had to leave for an engagement out of town. So it's me and Malachi and Maps. So let's give God praise for our music department. Amen. And we thank God for all of our, amen, first-time visitors that are viewing us online. And for those of you who are present today, we give God praise for you. Let the church say amen for those who are present. Amen. Give God praise for those who are present. We thank God for your face in the place. Genesis is the book. The chapter is 41. Just a verse of this number. We're going to the text. Thank uh, Sister Sherry and Yolanda. Evidently, this looks like the fingertips here. Uh, the Christmas tree and the decorations. And I don't know who else. Nico, did you help? I don't know. They, they do so much around here. But we give great right hands, Sister Sherry. Amen. That's what she shared with her. Amen. And uh, Yolanda, I don't know where she's at, but nevertheless, we thank God for them. Amen. They keep the church looking beautiful, don't they? Amen. Come on, let's give God praise for taking people like that. Thank you so much. Take it out the time to do what you do. Oh. Oh. Genesis chapter 41. 
Y'all love the Lord. I said, do you love the Lord? Y'all are nuts when I say, I love the Lord. I just, excuse me, I just love the Lord. Just tap somebody on the shoulder. I don't care if you don't even know him. Look, turn around and look at somebody and say, I just love the Lord. 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 Genesis chapter 41, verse 14. We shall begin our reading. I'm going to tiptoe around that 41st chapter. Thank you, Malachi. The church say amen, Brother Master. Amen. 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 Genesis chapter 41. You did bring your Bible. Amen. If you didn't, you can go ahead and pull out your phone. Ain't down more. Amen. It's up there. I won't make sure they brought one too. All right, Genesis chapter 41, verse 14, it says, From the New King James Version of the Bible, <coughs> Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon, and he shaved. New King James says, Changed his clothing and came to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream. And there is no one who can interpret it. But I've heard it said of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. Look at verse 16. So Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Look at verse 25. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good heads are seven years, and the dreams are one, and the seven thin and ugly cows which came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty heads blighted by the east wind are seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken to Pharaoh. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Indeed, seven years of great plenty will come throughout all the land of Egypt. But after them, seven years of famine will arise. And all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine will deplete the land. So, the plenty will not be known in the land because of the famine following, for it will be very severe. And the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice, because the thing is established by God, and God will surely bring it to pass. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord in his house of prayer. In his house of prayer. Holy Father, in the name of Jesus. Holy Father, in the name of Jesus. Holy Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. My Lord, our minds are fresh. Bread of heaven, feed me till I won't no more. Dismiss me from myself, and not only dismiss me from myself, but, oh God, I pray that Keith Tyler would decrease and your Holy Spirit would increase. I pray that Jesus will be the preacher and I will just be the mouthpiece. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for making real and relevant your word to the body of Christ and to the entire world that they may know that God is still on the throne. Amen. Anoint now. And may your word have free course to your glory and to our good. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. And they all said amen. 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 I've tagged this text, the interpreter. Amen. The interpreter. We continue our series under the general heading, Elevation. This is message number 11. As we tiptoe around the life of Joseph, over the last couple of months we have been following Joseph, 
learning from Joseph. For Joseph is a type of Christ. And we see in his life how God is at work even when Joseph can't figure it out. You ever been there when you can't figure it out but you know God has looked this up? Yeah. Old folk call it a spiritual good feeling. Yeah. God is mysteriously behind the scenes orchestrating, navigating, guiding you through life, working it out for your good. Yeah. You may not be able to track him but you can still trust him. I think I said something. Amen. In this particular story, we come to a place and point in the Holy Rift where Joseph now has been through a lot. He really has. He's been through a lot in so much that it seemingly was unfair. Life was unfair to Joseph. Up to this point, we find that Joseph has been what? Hated on by his brothers. At the age of 17, he is stripped of his coat of many colors that has been given to him by his father, Jacob. <laughs> we talked about that <laughs> those of us that have children, mental children, or whatever you're doing to help children, we talked about how we need to be mindful of our sins. <sighs> we talk about the sins the common sins of adultery, fortification, homosexuality, drunkenness, gambling. We talk about this stuff, don't we? But we don't talk about the sin of parental discrimination. Mm. Where parents oftentimes favor one child. There it is, oh my God. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about some of the sins that God talks about. Amen. And there's at least one person present, and maybe two or three that are watching me. You were victimized. You were the victim of being a wallflower in your own home. You were the black sheep of the family. You were the one that didn't get the special things. And there was one or two there that did get it, but it wasn't you. Amen. That is sinful in God's sight. And we saw how that began to unfold in the life of Joseph. And we even more so saw how that unfolded in now the life of all of Jacob's children. Because now Jacob is reaping what he saw, but he should have known that. I said before, so say I now again, you should get old being a fool. If you are, you're an old fool. Because, and I know this sounds strong, but it's right. After so many years, you ought to know. You ever met somebody that's too old? You say, you're just too old to act like that. Come on, tell somebody on the show and say, you know, I don't even write about you. You ever met somebody that's just, you're just too old? Why do you keep acting? You, that's, by the time, by the time you get a certain age. Hello, somebody. Some stuff, it ain't cute. It's not funny. Amen. Amen. There you are in your 50s, acting like you're in your 10s. That ain't been really that funny. Your jokes ain't even funny no more. Your rap is monkey. Come on, talk to me. Sir. Some things <laughs> over a period of time you just ought to grow out of. Paul said, when I was a child, I thought as a child, I understood as a child, I talked, I behaved as a child, but when I grew up, Put away the toys. I put away childish things. I don't know why I'm going there, but somebody evidently you need to hear that you need to put away some childish behavior. Amen. Hmm. Too old to be acting like that. Jacob should have known better. Stella, he should have known better because he too was uh -huh, a victim of parental discrimination. He was a mama boy. His brother was a dad's boy. And in that home, there was a division. Now one was favored over the other. So Jacob should have known that. And he learned how they divided him and his brother. 
And right now today, we have families that are divided. Why? Because somebody played favoritism. One sibling doesn't like another sibling. Well, even right now, they come to you. Well, you was always daddy's favorite anyway. You was always mama's favorite anyway. You hear that. But there's a deep scar there somewhere. Jacob should have known better. Now Joseph, his favorite child, named Royce, is now the victim. He is now reaping. The dominoes is falling on him. It's falling on him, sister mine. But God was with Joseph. What the Bible says over and over again. God was with Joseph. So as we create the contextual content for the passage of Scripture to put us in the right frame of mind, elevation is teaching us that God takes us through certain steps to get us to where He wants us to be. Because we oftentimes want the smooth self. It don't work like that. Hello, somebody. You got to take some punches. You got to walk through some. Deep waters. Uh, you got to go through some fire, some hurt, some pain. It's one thing to be stabbed in your back, but it's another thing when you pull the knife out and your fingertips are on it. Teach, Pastor. Don't you hurt yourself. You got enough folk going to do that. Hello, somebody. Be nice to yourself. Hug yourself. You ever hug yourself? Just hug yourself. Amen. Love on yourself. They're going to call yourself. They think I'm all right. Go on and hug on yourself. Do something for yourself. Take care of yourself. Because yes. ain't nobody going to take care of you better than you can take care of yourself. Amen. Are y'all listening to me? Joseph's brothers hated on him since tying in so much. Stripped him of his coat. So here he comes. They had his favorite boy stripped him of his coat. So Serena, they, they stripped him of his coat of many colors. They beat him up, twisted him, then they threw him in a pit, 30 feet down, a hole, a cistern. Can you imagine that? 17 years of age. Don't tell me young people don't go through something. You hear people say, well, that guy ain't really going through nothing. Yes, they are. Amen. Only God knows the pain they had to swallow, the endurance, the stuff they saw us grown folk do. And over here, how many of y'all remember back in the day there were certain things that took place, conversations and behavior that took place, and the old folk would make you get out of the room? Amen. Come on, wave your hand at me. Don't look at me funny. They said, get on out of here. This is grown folk talk. But now we say anything, brother Lee. We do anything in front of children now. And you wonder why they end up. They learn it from somebody. But at one time, you couldn't stand. No, you couldn't stand in the same chunk with grown folk. And you bet not interrupt them when they're talking. Right. I can't hear nobody out there. No, 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 no. You didn't do that. Brother Malachi, you didn't do it. But today, they have to endure so much and you wonder why they're stressed. They got enough to deal with in life as peers, peer pressure. Economic instability, family breakdown. They're dealing with so much. And they got to deal with our mess. And they're torn and they're warped. And they're psychologically bruised. In so much they want to get away from you sometimes. Oh yeah. But what do you do when you can't get away? Mm, such as the story of Joseph. He really couldn't get away. He threw him in a pit. He's left there. They ask him outside of the pit. The brothers are like, eating. He's down in a cold, dark pit with no food, no water, and they didn't even throw him a chicken ball. Sometimes your own family will mistreat you. Come on, help me, somebody. Am I right about it? See your need and just walk on past. Then they pulled him out of the pit, Brother Rick Cromwell. They pulled him out of the pit. They sold their brother. 30, 20 shekels, watch this, 20 shekels, thank you, Holy Spirit, of silver. The price of the slave, eight ounces of silver, two years' wages. Sold them off, got rid of him, then lied to their daddy and told him that he had been ravaged by an animal. Broke his daddy's heart for 22 
years. Amen. These boys walked past their daddy with a broken heart and never told him the truth. Ooh. Don't tell me children won't lie to you. Come on, help me here, somebody. Don't tell me family won't watch you bleed and never give you a bad name. That's painful, is it not? All these years they knew the dad's heart was broken, but yet instead they never told him the truth. But how many of y'all know there's a law called reciprocity? What goes around comes back around. Time is TikTok away. Joseph is now thrown into a pit. From a pit, he goes to prison, accused of a crime and a felony he never committed. The woman said he tried to rape me. Joseph said, I didn't touch the woman. I took off running. She came after me because I was intelligent. I had the favor of God upon me. I was going to work every day. I was doing everything right. She came after me because I was tall, dark, and handsome like Morris Chestnut. That's the first time somebody said amen since I've been preaching. I had my swag going on like, uh-huh, Obama and Benjamin Washington. And I was minding my own business, but I had that Michael B. Jordan look. Somebody said, oh, Lord, no, he did go. And she tried to rape me. And I wasn't going to let her have it because I had Respect about myself. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all know if you are a T-bone steak, you ain't got time for Vienna sauce. Amen. Come close. Amen. He said no. Took a running, snatched his clothes, told the family and everybody else. He raped me. He tried to rape me. He tried to have me. Here it is. Potiphar's wife has a bad case of the I can't help it. And the Bible teaches that women don't chase men. A man looks for a woman. Mm. How many of y'all know there are some people who do anything to get a man? You ain't got to say nothing. I'm going to preach it anyhow. Such was the case in the story of her. But she couldn't have him because people will only do what you allow. Off the prison he goes. Look at God. Elevation. Thrown into prison. He's there, Sister Beverly, for 10 years. 10 years in Potiphar's house and almost two to four years in prison. But he has the gift, Deacon Tony. And God has given him the gift that interprets dreams. And your gift makes room for you in the ministry. You ain't got to be nobody but who God called you to be. Be who you are in Christ. Pharaoh hears about this Hebrew slave. Look at God. All around, all over his life. Look at God. He interprets the dreams of, of a butler of Pharaoh who's in prison. He interprets the dream of the cupbearer of Pharaoh who's also in prison. He tells both of them, y'all get ready to get part. And one of you all is going to get your head cut off, but the other one is going to get restored back to your position. And he was right. The baker, <laughs> yeah, he loses his head. But the cop man gets restored back to his position. And Job said to him while in prison, he said, man, when you get free, Lord, have mercy, I feel like preaching. Remember me. Make sure you mention my name when you get before Pharaoh. Let him know about me. And how many of y'all know he forgot all about you? Isn't it strange how people will be suffering you can't get rid of it. But then when they get just a little air to breathe, amen. amen. They become somebody else. Can't find them. They're not there. They get jailhouse religion or some type of religion. I don't know what kind it is now. But when they get back on their feet, they are a totally different person. I beg you different. No, they're not. They've always been that type of person. Because you can only bring out of you what's already in you. And cars, cash, and cribs, and even sometimes pleasures and people will bring out of you what you've been camouflaging all along. Because you never re meet the real person until after time and experiences. You normally meet, that's right, the representative. 
And later on down the years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, you found, oh my God, I thought this was going to be a little house on the prairie, but it's a nightmare on Elm Street. Because now you're getting to know the real person. Such is the particular passage of scripture that's before us that Joseph is identifying who the real people are versus who the pseudo people are. The cupbearer, Brother Tavis, elevated to a position. He sits there for two years and doesn't say a word about Joseph. I wonder what Joseph was thinking while he was in prison during that period of time. I wonder if he's going to say something. Week one. I wonder if he's going to write me a letter. Week two. I wonder if he's going to come back and see me. Week three. No such thing. Two years. Sister Tina, two years. But God had his back. Are y'all sleeping? Y'all with me? I said, God had his back. Yes, he did. And when it doesn't seem like nobody was there and everybody's forgotten about you. The psalmist says in Psalm 23, there's somebody following me. I got a tag team. Goodness and mercy is following me all the days of my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Joseph had goodness and mercy following him. He had backup. So, Sister Juanita, now we come to the particular couch. Biblical story, couched in this story, is where we find our footing, and I'll bid you adieu. Pharaoh can't sleep at night. <laughs> and you wonder why? Maybe God is trying to tell you something. Amen. Pharaoh, mighty Pharaoh. The renowned world ruler. He's got these dreams. He's tossing and turning. Him all night long. Appetite is gone. His thought press process is all shaggy and shattered. And I don't care who you are, saved or unsaved, illiterate or literate, educated or uneducated, wealthy or poor, black, white. When you can't sleep. I got two amen out there. You can't function. And it don't take a whole lot. I don't know who we think we are, Sister Curly. You know, we rough and tough and nothing bothers us. And we all, no, something does bother you. Yeah, you can't be bothered. But I ain't going to let that get to you. Oh, yeah, stuff can't get to you. And God knows how to get our attention. All God has to do is lift Y'all don't hear me. You missed your shot. Somebody should have took out running down by the local arena, the new convention and all of that. Police should be chasing you right now, wondering why in the world you're running around like you shout. Because God has what? Sustained you, there it is, and preserved you and kept you all through 2021. That's why you got up this morning and was able to put your clothes on, amen, able to balance life, amen, able to think through what you went through, and thank God. If God had not kept his hand on you, you would look like what you've been through. I think I said something. Tweet that. How many of y'all know I thank God I don't look like what I've been through? Oh, yeah, you've been through some stuff. Tell your neighbor, said, I've been through some stuff. I, you, if you knew what I've been through, you'd shout for me. Amen. Pharaoh can't sleep. And God alone knows the future and he reveals it to whomever he chooses to reveal it to Amen. in his own timing. Be careful we're talking about who God is going to use and ain't used and not going to use. Amen. Talk about, well, I'm supporting them now, but I'm not going to support them later. Wait a minute. If I'm God's child and blood washed Back in 2020, Amen. well, guess what? I'm still God's child and blood washed in 2021. Amen. But we are so moody and fickle and funny. We'll find any reason not to sit beside Brother Cecil on a Sunday morning. Amen. 
Brother Cecil been sitting there about uh, at least 100 years. He ain't moving. So if you're not going to sit there, he's all right, because he's going to sit right there. But down through the, here's my point, down through the years, people will find all kinds of reasons not to support you or believe in you. That's right. Huh? Joseph is chosen by God. He had nothing to do with it. And aren't you glad that God didn't choose, didn't allow people to choose you? That he does the choosing? Because if people would have had a choice to choose you, you wouldn't be where you are today. Amen. There's a caution light flashing. It said, God reveals, watch this, I did not say go out and waste your hard earned money on Ouija boards and divination, black magic, 800 psychic lines, and palm readers. Don't do it. Somebody say, don't do it. Don't do it. It's clear to me, the man who is the Holy Spirit, glory to his name. Used Joseph to interpret, explain the meaning of dreams. And Laban's turn, Joseph said, let me make it plain and break it down for you, Pharaoh. What's going on? He's in prison. Pharaoh hears about it. Brings all of these soothsayers in, all these Egyptian folk in to try to dissect the dream. They can't do it. They tried, but they couldn't do it. All of a sudden now, the couple are saying, Today I must confess my faults. <laughs> How many of y'all know we all got faults? We all have something we need to confess. Yes, you do. And I'm always a little overly concerned, Brother Malachi, when folk are quick to point the opposite way instead of pointing at themselves. Could it be what they're pointing at you about is really their way of trying to release their guilt about their own conscience. They're calling you a liar, but they're the ones that's really the liars. Y'all catch that later. They say, you're the one that's hypocrite, but really they're the hypocrites. Am I right about it? Be careful. Somebody said be careful. Somebody pointed the finger at you. They ought to be pointing it yeah. 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 So Joseph said, let me break it down and shake it fast, show you what I'm working with, Pharaoh, and I'll be out of your way, Mr. Pharaoh. But I must let you know that in 1 Corinthians church, chapter 2, verse 4 says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. What do you mean? The human mind cannot understand the spiritual things of God. Human philosophy cannot explain the things of God because why, Sister Wani, they are spiritual. Brother Gordon, Joseph is a vessel that God has chosen, Sister Fry, to reveal the secret things of God to Pharaoh. For it is written in Deuteronomy chapter 29 and 29, Malachi maps it, the secret things belong to the Lord our God. Verses 14 through 46 is key. This section provides us with the climax of the story. Scene one. Somebody say scene one. one. Joseph was a forgotten Hebrew slave. And I told you last week, <laughs> be not dismayed, whatever be tired. God will take care of you, but come. People will forget about you. You better hear me. You can look at that phone all you want. It's still working. You paid your bill. They know they didn't call it. You ain't got to talk to them. You can go to your email all you want. Look for their email. No, they didn't email you. You can look at your DM message. They did not send you a direct message or messenger. They will forget about you. Amen. Go to your page. You won't do a like on your page. But go to somebody else's page. Do a like a heart. A like a heart. Comment, comment. Go right past your page. Scroll right past it. Come back to it later. Scroll again. Come back. People like that you need to delete. Because all they're doing is trying to meddle and keep up with what you got going on. I can't hear nobody out there. I don't have time to go through everybody's Facebook friend list. Amen. Who liked who, who checked. Who has that type of time? Amen. I can't hear nobody. No, somebody don't like what I be saying. Who has that type of time? They go through every name, look at every like, every dislike. Did you not know that social media will tell you what to think? And that's why some people can't have a good day. Why? They start up, get up in the morning, watch this. 
Serena, get up, water guy. Jesus, oh, never mind. Go to social media. Oh, my God. <laughs> are y'all trying to, are y'all going to help me? <laughs> the secret things belong to the Lord our God. Scene one, Joseph was forgotten. Scene two, Joseph is now standing before mighty Pharaoh. <laughs> when God has destined for you to be somewhere, you're going to get there. Oh, yeah, you're going to get there. You may not like the steps, the strategy, the pattern, but God's going to get you to wherever it is he wants you to be. Brother Joy, they said, I would never make it. I would not be here when I first came here. They said, oh, man, you're going this, that, the other. All preacher, all preacher, all preacher. Nobody lasts. No, only oh, every, 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 every. If anyone's was going one that can last long, you no, no, you not, no, 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 no. Here I am now, twenty-two years later. Yeah. <laughs> to God be the glory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God's gonna get you to where He wants you to be. That's not just for me as a preacher. That's for you Amen. as a child of God. Somebody tried to wipe you out. The devil tried to take you out. You're not supposed to be sitting in church right now. Clothed and in your right mind. But God, Brother Wesley, said, I'm going to get you to where you got. That's good news, man. He's standing before mighty Pharaoh, soon to be important, second most important person in Egypt. He's standing there and getting ready to be second in command because God said it so. Modern society has brainwashed us for our clothes. Brainwashed us, church, <laughs> to give our faith and belief in overnight wonders. So what, what is happening with us is really strange. You know, I'm old school, Brother Malachi. I came up in Louisville, Kentucky back in the day. I'm old school. Somebody said old school. I grew up where you brush your teeth with bacon and soda. Amen. Sometimes salt. Come on, you ain't always had cold meat. Talk to me. Amen. We use live soap. That's the soap you boil on top of the stove. Y'all don't remember that. That's the soap they use to wash your mouth out if you said something you ain't gonna be saying. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You ain't always had hot running water. How many of y'all gonna have to go outside, pump the water? Water have to prime the pump. Then you're bringing it in the heat. And somebody said, I have no idea what he's talking about. Yeah, none. Y'all don't know nothing about taking beans and soaking them in water overnight to help cut back on the gas. Y'all not going to help me. Y'all just not going to help me today. Y'all don't know anything about washing the grit off the greens. And I can always tell when I go eat somebody's house when the greens have some crunch crunch in them. I mean, somebody didn't want to sh Come on, here, get me. Somebody said back in the day. We want it quick. Everything we want quick. Somebody wants me to hear up and give a quick start. I came up in the church, but we had church all day long, all day long, church. Sunday school all day long. Morning service all day long. Eat, are y'all listening to me? Evening service all day long. BT all day long. Vacation Bible school all day long. Revivals all day long. Now we want a one hour modernizer cleaner service. In by 12, I'm out of one. So if God moved at 105, you missed your breakthrough. How many of y'all know you can't time God? We live in a quick. Give it to me quick. Take it quickly and sadly we give it up too quick. No time to wait. Just give up anything. Amen. But how many of y'all know you got to make folks earn your respect? Amen. Earn your dignity. Amen. You just don't give it away. But we live in what is called heavy up sickness society. And right now, attitude, we want it right now. We want God to microwave our miracle over. And if God don't move quick enough, we go, well, God taking too long, so I got to have the way. You've been really messed up now. And although he's able to move quicker than quick, it pays to wait on the Lord. That's your shot right there. How many of y'all know it pays to wait on the Lord? 
And sometimes, if you're not careful, you'll get your flesh uh, caught up in your dream. Amen. Say amen, I out your son. Every dream is not from God. Be careful about saying, God showed me this is a dream. Because Satan knows how to make you in your subconsciousness dream some stuff that will be detrimental for you. So we go from the dream to the interpretation. God could have sent a more practical dream. Somebody say practical. Which Pharaoh could have understood, but that was not God's method. We gotta learn that doing God's work, God's way equals God's results. Stick with me. I've been here for 28 minutes. I've been counting my time. Somebody say stick with it. Why is it that we make the work of the church so hard? Bird King mentality. We just got to have it our way. But it'll never work until we do it God's way. Joseph, here it is. He says, Mr. Pharaoh, the dream, the two dreams are the same message. Interpretation. Both the seven cows and the seven and the heads of grain represent seven years. Look at this. Seven years of plenty symbolized by the healthy cows and heads of grain will be followed by seven years of famine. The famine will be so severe, Pharaoh, that the seven years of plenty will be forgotten. The duplicate dreams, the reason why they were duplicated, is God's way of indicating that the message was certain of fulfilled, and it would happen soon. Pharaoh, God is revealing to you that a famine is coming. Old school church did it like this. There's a storm out on the ocean and it's moving this old way. If your soul is not anchored in Jesus, Malachi, you with me, you will soon drift away. He's telling him, he said, there's a famine coming and you better prepare for it unlike the world has ever known. Pharaoh, Oh, what 
God is saying to us because we get caught up in the personality. And God can speak through anybody he wants to speak through at any time. How do you know when God is telling you something? If you study the book, you can take the spirit. The Bible says you try the spirit by the spirit. The problem with many of us, we don't know the book. We read everything else. But we don't read the Bible. Just read the Bible. That's all you got. If you can just read the Bible, you'll find that God will reveal truth in his own way. So we get around to it when we get around to it. We set idle. We just push the messenger or uh, the message aside and we lean on our own understanding. Well, how's that working for you? Matthew 6 and 8. I mean, Malachi 6 and 8 says, Malachi, Micah, Micah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Micah says in 6 and 8, Micah, M-I-C-H-A, 6 and 8 says, He has shown you, old man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly before your God? So he's already shown you. Pharaoh listened and he took action. Folks who know everything don't need to know anything because they already know everything. Tweet that. I don't have a conversation for nobody who knows everything. You know it all, so I ain't going to hide no more. You can wait all you want. I have no conversation for you because you know everything. So since you know everything, Amen. it's nothing I can tell you. Because folks who know everything don't need to know anything because they already know everything. In essence, they really don't know nothing. Pharaoh concluded, I need to know what the meaning of the dream is. No one in my circle can help me with this. Here it is. He had to go outside of his circle. And I don't know who I'm preaching to, but before I shut this thing down, there stands Joseph, a God sent. Now watch this. It's going to bless you. God oftentimes, Antioch, and to our online viewers, steps outside of your circle to reveal to you truth. Okay. A God sent, oftentimes, God will use someone outside of our inner circles to bless us. Amen. I got one amen out there. Somebody over here going to come back. God oftentimes, watch this, Sister Myers, will step outside of our kinfolk circle. Sometimes even our church circle. Huh? To send somebody our way who is a God sent. Watch this, to aid us and show us a better way. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. So that tells me you got to be aware of them other folk within the circle. Not all, but some of them. Again, not all, but some of them, because there are those within the circle who will hinder you. Amen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they'll hold you back. They ain't going nowhere, so they want you to go nowhere. And they want you down at their level, so you calm it down. Oh, ain't nothing special about you. You do the same thing I do. You think like I think. Amen. So ain't nothing, ain't nothing really, you know, ain't nothing. You ain't really got one hole for real. They want to keep us in their darkness. But how many of y'all know I refuse to be miserable? And I refuse to lower myself to their level of thinking. You don't have that type of authority. I'm not giving you that type of power. Because who and what gets your attention gets you. So whatever gets your attention or whoever gets your attention, they get you. And how many of y'all know you can't give everything and everybody your attention? Huh? Back in the day, there was an RB song back in the 60s, a group out of Los Angeles, California. Y'all might not know nothing about it because y'all been in church all of y'all life. They're called the Friends of Distinction. That's what they were called. And they had a song that went something like this. I am ever rolling wheel without a destination real. I am ever spinning top, whirling around till I drop. Oh, but what I am to do, my mind is in a whirlpool. Give me a little hope, one small thing to cling to. You got me going in church. Around and around I go. I'm spun out. 
over you. Somebody shout back at me, the devil is a lie. I refuse to be held down. Somebody say, I refuse. I refuse to be held back. Holla at your boy if you, if you hear me. I refuse to spin around like a merry-go-round. Somebody shout, I've been on this rodeo long enough. I'm getting off now. Quit spending precious time with people who are just going around in circles. Thank God that Pharaoh had enough common sense to follow the advice of a cupbearer and a Hebrew slave. Here comes Joseph. Amen. His next step to elevation. A slave. Helping a prominent, powerful ruler. Don't let nobody demean you because of your status. The events that now transpire are this debt which no human mind can explain or manipulate because God can do what no other power, no other person, no other political party can do. How do y'all, how do y'all, how do y'all sit there and not say amen? How do y'all, can somebody say, I know what he's talking about. How many of y'all know God can do what no other can do? I feel like preaching. My God. Somebody say, my God. My God is the can-do God. Somebody say, can-do. He can do it. Somebody shout, he can do it. You fill in the place. Whatever it is in your life, he can do it. Somebody say, he can do it. He can do that which is impossible. Is there anything too hard for God? You need to tell your it. Whatever your it is, the God I serve can do it. Somebody shout, he can do it. Nothing is impossible to God. Joseph is now standing before Pharaoh. I said, I feel it, y'all. I'm going to feel it. Somebody shout, he's feeling it, y'all. They said, I'll never make it. They said, I'll never amount to anything, Pharaoh. But here I am today because I'm still holding on to God's unchanging hand. How many of y'all know after all you've been through, you're still standing? You're still, you're still standing. Somebody say, still standing. I'm, I'm still here. Somebody say, I'm still here. I'm still cold. Survivor. Somebody shout out, I am a survivor. The Bible says he shaved. Somebody said he shaved. Joseph got out his razor. Amen. Shaved himself. Cleaned himself up. Amen. Threw his jail clothes away. Now he's standing in front of Pharaoh with a new garment on. Why? Because he ain't going back to jail no more. He said, that's my whole life. Somebody said, that's my whole life. Somebody in here right now, thank God that God has brought you where you are. Hold on now, God. God has brought you to where you are, but you didn't get to where you are now until you threw away your grave clothes. You have to throw away some dead stuff. Please keep God up. You have to throw away some old habits because you couldn't go to a higher level current weighted down dead stuff. So what you decided to do is say, I'm going to shake, 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 shake the devil off. Somebody need to give God praise right now that you shook the devil loose. Somebody said, I did it. I'm glad that I did it. Somebody say, I did it. And I'm glad. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so what Joseph does? I'm done. Joseph said, well, wait a minute. Before y'all go too far. Joseph said, let me pause right here. In verse 16, look at it very closely. It said, yeah, Brother Freddie Gillis, it said, it says, Joseph said, I know that y'all been talking about me. Oh, yeah. He said that, uh, yeah, hold me, hold me, spirit. He said, I know y'all been talking about me. And they've been bragging on me. And talking about I have the gift of interpreting dreams. But Joseph said, I'm wise enough. I'm humble enough. And I got enough sense to tell y'all that it's not in me. God is the one that interprets dreams. So what Job was saying to us, I got to give God the credit for blessing me. And when God blesses me, I got to tell Unless they make it happen. And shame on you if you allow someone in God right, to bamboozle you, to make you think that if they move, you ought to move. But you ought to tell the devil, this ain't coming to America. And I ain't jumping to your head and birthday. And I'm not going to bark because you. Because you 
and you got to be careful about allowing people to elevate you. Simple thought it was in Adolf Hitler, but Adolf Hitler would tell you they thought I could resurrect, yeah, the Nazi generation, but Adolf Hitler would tell you it's not in me. Fidel Castro would tell you uh, they thought that it was in me, but Fidel Castro would tell you if they turned on me uh, and executed me uh, because it's not in me, uh, ain't gonna read. Uh, they thought uh, when they destroyed the, ten ta the Twin Towers that it was in Osama bin Laden, uh, but ain't gonna read. Uh, God allowed uh, a soul, brother, amen. Run for president, and he brought down Osama bin Laden. Sent in special forces, uh, caught him at home watching porno, uh, arrested him, uh, and then executed him. Uh, dropped him in a body bag and dropped him down in the middle of the sea uh, because it's not in him. Uh, ain't gonna read. Some of us thought uh, that if we elect a black president, uh, that the world would be a better place. Uh, we elected Barack. Obama two times, but we learned something uh, that our deliverance preach boy is not in Obama, but our deliverance is in Jesus. Ain't God alright? Can I get a witness out there? Is there anybody out there that can give God glory and say, yeah, see, yeah, I've learned that it's not in science. I've learned.
said, I'm glad about it. We learned the hard way who it is and who it isn't in. Yeah. Just when we thought, oh, it's in it. Oh, they, that's the one. Oh, that's God said, mm -hmm. you better come to me and let me guide you. Because it's in me. Ain't God all right? As we stand all over the building, the doors of the church remain open. The dream, the interpretation, the interpreter. Elevation. Elevation. Joseph said, I thank you that you invited me, sir, but I didn't get here by myself. Amen. Start selling myself and forget what you've done for me. I know people are celebrating and clapping and giving me accolades and awards, but Lord, it's you, oh God. It's you. It's you, oh God. So I want to invite someone today to step out of your pew, walk down this aisle, take this pew right here. We don't put out chairs because nobody ought to try. Everybody needs a church home. Everybody. Birds need wings to fly. And just as fish need water to swim in, you need a church home. And those of you online, you need a church home. I want to invite you to come while the blood is still running warm in your veins. I call it ABC. A, acknowledge. I am a sinner. That's the criteria. You have to be a sinner to come to Jesus. B, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. C, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. The choice is yours. You can come. Contact us online. And for those of you that are present, you can step out of your pew and walk down this way and take this seat. We'll be glad to have you in the fellowship of the church. Mm. I surrender all. Is that you today? Please contact us. Visit our website at ambc1840.org and reach us by email just right there. Amen. Like us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. 
Also want to encourage you to sow your seed. Givelify.com, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y.com. Download that app. It is safe and secure. Sow your seed. We ask everybody to go beyond and give. $25 Thanksgiving offer to the ministry of this church. God bless you. Have a beautiful week is my prayer. Signing off here at the Antioch Church. Surrender. Let's get ready to give.